Now, I have been personally waiting for this for quite a while now, but finally uh, I got access to the new fighters and the new implants. So, it is time to find out how much is the CNC care improved. And I'll do the same thing with the other cares as well, but since this thing is one of the most popular ships in the game and one of the most loved ships in the game, I think it will be very interesting to see uh, how much uh, DPS can I get out of this thing. Now, the new fighters are quite interesting. They are the red-tailed hawks. They are kind of built to go along with this ship and they also use the composers, which is very interesting. So, I have offense red-tailed hawks installed on this ship. I'll also be trying out the integrated ones because the Integrate are a bit different from the offense ones, but here you can take a look at their stats. Now, they have a 14 km up range with the average fluff of 1.01 km. Now, the composers are weapons that uh, should be used literally at the at their op range. Their fall off usually isn't that good, and the uh, accuracy, or should I say, the the damage applied to the target drastically falls off if you are too far away from them. So it will be fun to see how these fighters will perform since they do use the composers and uh, and the same mechanics still apply to these ships. Now 16,000 DPS is quite impressive, not gonna lie. Now I have the integrated red tailed hawks and they have a bit more range, and uh, it seems like they're also a little bit faster. The actually, no, the integrated ones are, are slower. 90 meter per second is their uh, flight velocity, and they do uh, two damage types, while the other fighters do only one. That's also something that is quite unique to these ships. So. I believe it's going, to be, it's going to be very fun to see how they will perform. Now I'll just quickly load them uh, in the ship. I just want to show you the DPS with both fighters installed. Now, I have to say they did make the, the loading a bit less laggy, I would say. The most annoying part about, the ca about carriers in general is when you have to load the fighters. It takes seven and a half years and maybe I don't know, maybe a couple decades or something. The, so definitely happy to see that the loading is, you know, I I is less troublesome. Because I know when I was last time I was loading a carry, it took like seven years to just load the fighters. I uh, see that the animation is a bit faster, you know, so I guess that's one good thing. That's one good thing that hasn't been mentioned like anywhere, and I kind of like it. So the integrated ones are being loaded in. Uh, I would say the offense ones should have higher DPS, but the integrated ones are also very interesting. And I'll compare both of them, because uh, their price is... I think the integrated ones are actually more expensive. The offense ones are still quite rare. 20.63 km range, 9.3 thousand kinetic and 9.2 thousand explosive damage. Okay, that's interesting. So let me uh, load in uh, one of the offense ones, so we can have a very nice comparison between the between the two. Once the effect of the ship kicks in, of course. So 20.63 km range, 14.06 km range, but the offense ones seem to be doing a bit more kinetic, while the damage output on the integrated ones seems to be balanced out. Which is interesting. Uh, although, the I think the extra DPS, the extra kinetic damage might push the DPS a little bit higher. Although, if the damage output is balanced, then I believe that it will perform better in some let's say special occasions, depending on what type of resistance your target has. Now, uh, time to take a look at the new implant, the aerospace tactics. So, uh, let's take a look at the primary attribute. Increased drone uh, mobility and high speed combat capability, increasing damage by 
24% max, 24% flight velocity by 30% maximum, 30% and reducing inertia modifier by 20% and this area combat determination state upon activation. Area combat determination increases drone range by 50% maximum, 50% reduces flight velocity by 90% and increases drone command range by 40 km. Area speed attacks effective on drones, fighters and lightweight ships. So, this kind of seems like it's transforming your fighters into sentries, although you will be uh, limited to a short range combat. Basically, if you click on the implant and launch fighters, the fighters will take a very, very, very long time to get to the target. So, it is best to activate this implant when your fighters are already very close to the enemy ships. Which is interesting, uh, since I didn't really expect the effect to be like that. I expected the, the bonus on speed, but it seems like it, it is it has a drawback to it. And I'm fine if the implant has drawbacks. Still have to see how it performs in uh, in actual combat, of course. That will be the, the most important part. And, well, you can take a look at the basic info list. The extra range is definitely welcomed. And it's definitely interesting, although fighters that perform like sentry drones, that is something that I haven't so far heard in this game. So that, that will be fun to uh, see. I mean, it's only extra 40 kilometers, so 540 kilometers is always okay. I believe you can even extend that even more with uh, a different rig setup, but most of the carriers usually heavy DPS focus build, or if it's a PvP carry, it has a tank, or a versatile solo ship that can do both. So overall, it should be useful for uh, for all scenarios. Uh, although that speed reduction is minus 90%, that's a pretty big reduction. It's, it will definitely make your fighters really, really slow. Uh, so it's not really going to be that good against a high moving target, let's say. High moving targets will easily be able to outmaneuver your fighters if you have the implant engaged, at least based on what I'm seeing here. Now, the attribute here first attribute Mighty Arsenal, turn HP plus 50%, turn damage plus 10%, turn flight velocity minus 30%. So this basically increases the drone hit points and it does add a bit more damage, but it further does decrease your flight velocity. Now if, if anything, if there's anything I've learned from uh, from seeing all the different carrier and super carrier kills, uh, it is very important to have very fast fighters, since tackle ships usually move very quickly and most of the fighters, if their fighters are slow, if the carriers, uh, if, they're, uh, if the fighters of the carrier are slow, then you are not going to be able to catch the tackle ship and you might be in trouble. Combat technique, drone tracking speed 24%, fighter explosion velocity 24%, drone signature radius minus 10%. So this basically does increase your tracking, does increase the damage applied to target, but it does also decrease the drone signature radius or the fighter signature radius by 10%. Actually, my apologies. Uh, it, it, inc it doesn't increase the damage application, it actually makes it worse by 24% because it's not reducing it. Okay. Efficient commanding, turn command range plus 20 kilometers, fighter command range plus 100 kilometers. So that's technically you can get an extra 140 kilometer range out of your carrier if you have this, uh, this secondary attribute active. Maybe you're looking at perhaps 700 kilometer range with a long range built normal carrier and the versatile solo ships maybe 450 500 km range with the light ships overall if you like long range then this is definitely quite interesting although no further damage increase it only increases the, the range of your drones and light ships or fighters it will be very interesting to to test this out on a drone boat Recovery technique, drone flight velocity 10% and drone recovery range plus 15 km. Now, usual recovery distance is about 2.4-2.5 km, this will enhance to 15-17 km, which in some cases can be useful. And the tactical determination, if 
any drone is under attack and its shield falls below 50% trigger, the death in the tactics can be toggled between adaptive determination and desperate determination. Adaptive determination, all drones throw their power to power and engine, reducing shield recharge time by 80%, reducing the effect of status weapon re received by 65% and increased fire velocity by 20%. Desperate determination increases the damage of all drones by 15% and reduces the damage output. The damage uh, reduces the, the, the shield damage taken by 50%. So overall, it's a very interesting level 45 attribute. Although this is a level 45 implant, here you can take a look at all the all the stats that uh, go along with it. And there's a lot of numbers, although from my little test that I've done previously, it's well the, the numbers make it feel more than it actually is. The the boost is definitely nice, but the numbers just make it feel uh, even stronger than it is. But overall, very interesting effect. A very interesting effect. And... I mean, the drone shield recharge time is... Basically, it improves the path recharge of the drone shield. There's a lot of things revolving around the, on the passive shield recharge lately. I like that. I really like that a lot, and I'm definitely looking forward for the next patch that hopefully does something with the path recharge on all ships. Now the general units that I'll be using here are basically the fighter arrays, and uh, I'm not going to be changing them throughout the video. As for the attributes, well, I'll just pick uh, the, the first two that I think will be benefiting me the most, although I usually say pick the attributes that you think will work the best for you, pick the attributes that, going, that are going to benefit your ship and your build the most. That's how I base uh, most of the things, that's how I base most things when I, when I build the ship. Now 18,195 DPS with the integrated uh, red-tailed hawks, they have about 10,000 damage on kinetic and explosive. So pretty much balanced and evened out. So let's undock and let's see how much DPS Undocking. I can get out of this thing when I have the modules active. Now this implant is more of a sustained uh, DPS implant. Meanwhile the drone bombs are basically high burst, high alpha uh, damage implant. Both are very good in their own way and they both have different, I would say different use, although you can use both for anything that you like. And in a different video I'll compare the Bombard Tactic with uh, with this one, since I believe that's going to be interesting to find out. Now 27,000, almost 28,000 DPS with the CN Carrier, we are already very close to Super Carrier DPS category. Now my Nano Core here is a, I think, I think it's the, the Weeb Nano Core, I, I don't know. The game doesn't really allow me to click on the nano core. When I click on it, it never opens the window, and I can't really disassemble it. But the nano core, as always, only has a primary attribute. I haven't upgraded anything, so basically, like stock, uh, stock gold, no upgrades, nothing. Just you know, the primary attribute, and that's about it. But this DPS is quite scary, and uh, as mentioned, we are very close to super carry DPS. At least with the light fighters, not with the heavy ones. You can't fit heavy fighters on the CN carrier. Now, when you directly activate the implant, it doesn't really. Uh, well, it does increase the damage, obviously, but it also does reduce your speed. And now I have, well, same, D same DPS. And this is uh, a very unfortunate thing that I noticed. This implant shares the same problem that the Bombard Attack the implant has. It doesn't really show you the actual DPS when you click on the implant. The Bombard Attack does the same. has a 300 bonus on DPS, but it doesn't show it on the fitting window. But the DPS is still there. So unfortunately, uh, can't really, you know, see the, the, ta the effect take place. Although the DPS with the simple active is about 35,000, so yeah, we are definitely in super care DPS category now, which is, you know, quite quite interesting. Yeah, still has the same uh, DPS value with the integrated uh, red-tailed hawks. 
It's flight velocity 169 meter per second. That is excruciatingly slow. That is very slow. That is very, very slow. So basically, with the implant on, you are not going to be able to trace down anything that's fast, which is uh, a, a a big problem. And this is 28,000 DPS now. This is with the with the integrated ones, and a uh, little difference, a very little difference in DPS. But well, it's one thing to just look at raw numbers. Uh, let's actually see how they perform in combat. Now, I have to say, my device, my phone here, is uh, definitely on its last legs. Uh, I did have a, uh, I did have an, an entire 20 minute long video, but that was lost because the, the phone crashed. And when it crashed, it basically, well, it lost the video, it corrupted it. So I had to basically redo the whole thing. Uh, so yeah, my device definitely not going to live very, very long from, from now on, that's for sure. And I have no idea with what I'll replace it with, but yeah, I'll have to think about that. I'll, I'll have to start to think about that very soon, since it, it started to have random reboots. Sometimes it just turns off and doesn't turn on. Sometimes it has a boot loop, but turns on eventually. All of that are signs that its time is near. Anyway, uh, back to the Sion Care. Now, I can tell you immediately that the yeah, that the fighters definitely act like they're using the composers. You really have to nail the optimal range extremely accurately, since if the fighters are orbiting too far away, they are not going to be able to hit anything. Uh, even if if your optimal is 14 km, but you're yeah, orbiting at 20 attack. kilometers, the fighters will not hit. And you really have to yeah, set the orbit to be at, uh, at optimal, since the composers don't really like long distance, they don't really like to go above the optimal range. However, I have to say that these things do slap. Uh, they feel like... Uh, I'm trying to find a very interesting comparison, very accurate comparison. They feel like We're sentry really drones at scrambled. this moment, because their speed is uh, severely reduced, but their overall damage has been improved, and they do a lot of damage. So they, they, ha they have a very interesting uh, mechanic and overall a, a unique playstyle. Now, based on the fighter speed, they can't really be used in a well. They can. They they can be used uh, for a sniper carrier, but you have to activate the implant when your fighters are basically very close to the enemy ships. Since when you turn on the implant, your speed will be severely reduced, and anything can be faster than your fighters. Any frigate, cruiser, destroyer, even battleships can be faster than your than your fighters. So uh, you will have to either click the implant on and off constantly, or basically you will have to park your ship in the middle of the enemy ships and just uh, run the run the PVE encounter that way. Since if your ship is basically in the middle of the en of the enemy ships in the middle of the enemy bubble, then your fighters don't have to move much since all the enemy ships will be all around you within the range. And even then, sometimes you'll have to turn off the implant to chase down the the faster ships that are orbiting at uh, at a longer distance. So overall, while I do like how this works, th th it also has drawbacks. It really has. Can't really use it like the bombard attack the implant and just yeet like 69,420 DPS at at the target and just laugh yeah, from a uh, hundred claw this. Doesn't really work that way with uh, with this implant. It has a more We're constant DPS output that's uh, very appreciated, that's very very appreciated since I know a lot of you guys have told me that the Bombard Tactic isn't really, isn't really suited for PvE because of its high cost and because of the, um, of the way how it works. Basically it's like the Barrage Implant in, in a way. Both are just high burst and both are more applicable to a single target than applicable to a vast, ma uh, to a vast majority of targets. So that's that would be the the comparison between the barrage implant and um, and this one and the bombard attack. 
This implant is more of the sustained DPS type. Its DPS does pale in comparison to the Bomber Tactic DPS. I mean, the Bomber Tactic just gives you a flat out 300% bonus on DPS on alpha damage for for two literal two, for two cycles, which means that this thing with Bomber with the Bomber Tactic implant would have somewhere around 90,000 DPS, which is definitely in the area of a super capital of a super carrier so the CN carrier with these fighters with this build with the bomber tactic implant would do much 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 more damage but a short burst not sustained but a short burst which is more than enough to wipe the grid with most chips in, in seconds so and the aerospace tactic implant I would say definitely has a much better use for PvE, although although it also has that sustained DPS and it can also be used for PvP as well. It will just lack the absolute insane alpha damage that uh, the Bomber Tactic Implant has. And in all ways, that's actually better. It's better to have sustained DPS than having high burst, but in the game there's also situations where high burst is actually commanded over sustained which means that in the end both have their ups and downs now I, I, am, am I a fan of the ridiculously high DPS output on the bomber tank? well obviously not I'm really not a fan of uh, having broken stuff but I still don't really understand why the Bomber Tactic is still the way it is. That's like literally the most broken implant in the game right now. It still is. Nothing is as broken as the Bomber Tactic. That That is just ridiculously, really stupidly strong. And I, I, I know, I mean, why am I mentioning this? Well, I know that the developers are watching. I mean, the developers do listen when you, when you don't scream to them. That's something that I learned. They, they they listen when you're talking to them in a in a you know in a way that adults do. Uh, I don't really I I understand uh, how how everything works. So uh, that's basically the the reason why I'm uh, giving feedback in a normal way like this. It's the the, the best thing to do, to be honest. And I forgot what I was about. Oh, I didn't. I didn't forget. Okay. Now, why am I matching super carriers? Well, I'll also be doing the same test with super carriers. I'm very curious to see how they perform. And recently, I, I've been reading so much stupid about super carriers. Like, if if it continues like this, I'll have to respond to it. Uh, if it continues to be, if uh, if the Any stupid continues, detected. well, <laughs> I'll have to respond to it because I, I really attack. hate when I see uh, invalid information attack. about a ship or you know. When I really don't like or hate when I see uh, stupid. Basically, I I am I despise stupid. If there is something I hate, it's stupid. And when stupidity is being spread like wildfire. So if if the stupid continues, well, I'll have to respond to it. I mean, I already kind of plan to respond to it anyways, but there, there are some things that have to be uh, mentioned about super carriers because a lot of, I mean, some, some players just have absolutely no idea how these ships work or how these ships are just meant to be used. They, they only complain. They only complain and do nothing else but complain. Uh, some of these players have to be... Well... I'll try to explain to them uh, in a normal manner, in, in, in a non-whiny manner, uh, how the ships work and I'll point out their mistakes in what, in what they're saying. But anyway, that's a topic for... That's a, that's a topic for a different video. My apologies for getting uh, sidetracked here. But anyway, the... I mean, I mean the fighters are doing well. However, I totally I feel like fighters with the composers is kind of weird. 
because of the, the way the, the composers work. It is very easy to miss the target, but when they do hit, they rack. So I'm trying to figure out if it's if it's worth to have the composer fighters or the normal fighter. If it's worth to have the the red tailed hawks over the normal ordinary uh, faction fighters, since the normal fighters are much easier to use. They use missiles. Missiles don't really care about, well, they do care about optimal range because if they're too far away they are not going to be doing any damage, but they don't have tracking. They don't care about the speed that they're moving at, they don't care about things like that. They only care to be within the, the optimal range. Now, the composers are known to have not so good tracking, and this also does... This is also applied to to these fighters, to the red tail hawks, it's applied to them because they use the same weapon. And these these hawks are, I would say, more comparable to lightweight ships than they are comparable to the normal fighters. I mean, they honestly do lack, uh, they do act like uh, like lightweight ships with much worse tracking <laughs> and uh, I would say maybe a bit more DPS. I will have to compare them as well. But they're definitely not ordinary Any fighters. So the extra paper DPS is definitely very nice to look at. It's very no, it's it's a very attractive thing. Honestly, I'll, I'll, I will I won't lie. I like to have I like to have decent numbers on on my sitting screen. I mean, everyone does. Who doesn't like to have a very good DPS output? I mean, we all do. We all like that. Although, yeah, in my case, I prefer to have a good tank over DPS, <laughs> but that, that, that's me, that, that's me. Now, I've noticed that the uh, DPS applied is, and, and this, is very, this is very weird, because it has explosion velocity, it, it, explosion radius, they, they do have that, but they use uh, decomposers, so, I don't know, kind of weird how these things are set up but again that's a topic for a different that's a topic for a different time uh, overall and their applied DPS is definitely uh, all over the place in some cases it just wrecks the ship like one click one click kill in some other cases it struggles to do damage and that is mostly due to the fact that the optimal range isn't truly really matching the optimal range of the decomposed weapon that they have, or missile, actually I have no idea what, uh, it says decomposer in the, in the description, I'll just go along with the decomposer in theory, because missiles do only damage, on all damage types, decomposers act like, like, the, the damage that the, the, these things do, so that's, uh, <laughs> that's a very interesting, but the damage basically like all over the place, and and that's, uh, say that's a problem, well, problem, potentially a problem, since the, od the other nor normal fighters don't really suffer from that problem. They apply as much as they can, and they always hit if they are within range. And they're also much, much cheaper. I mean, I don't even know what sh what's the price of these things, probably in the billions at this moment. Probably like 90 billion per squad that's just how expensive uh, that's just my guess I have no idea how much they cost but they sure cost a lot that's for that's a fact so cost to performance definitely goes to the normal to the normal fighters although the the red tail hogs sure seem to be delivering a bit more DPS and the red tailed hogs sure seem to be unique in well in their own way I would say but they're still it's definitely it's definitely difficult for me to, to come to a to a conclusion with uh, with these fighters because I, I personally I enjoy using them. Uh, they definitely they do their job well. But is it really worth to spend billions when you can just buy the normal fighters that are like a hundred times cheaper and you still have good DPS output on this thing and in some cases perhaps even better DPS application because they use missiles instead of these fighters that that use decomposers. Uh, that's what's revolving around my mind now but 
these things are still fun. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I definitely want to see what you guys say. Or what you guys have to say about that? Is it worth to, to have these fighters based on the performance here, or or are the ordinary ones better? I don't. Know. Uh, maybe in PVP mm -hmm. might be. We'll have to test that out as well. Okay, now I have switched to the offense Red Hawks, and they are slower. Now I can tell you right away that that speed is noticeable. Speed is very important for fighters, and with this implant, and by default, these fighters seem to be on the slower side, even without the implant being active. So definitely, speed is something that you should be very careful around, especially when uh, when you are in no sec, in no space, because. I've seen, uh, I think I, I can't even count how many dead cares I've seen over the, over the last like month. Most of the cares that, that I've seen uh, get yeeted are either AFK, sleeping, sleeping AFK, or just had a bad build, or basically their fighters didn't have enough speed to catch the tackle. Usually the tackle is a interceptor or a overprop destroyer. It's kind of hilarious how certain, well, so-called players complain about destroyers, yet destroyers are the main, well, one of the main reasons and my main causes why <laughs> why capitals are being blown to bits. And it is kind of hilarious when you think about that. That's kind of hilarious when I think about that. But yeah, small Any ships are the main reason why big ships die. That's how it is. That's how it is. That's just how, how, how things work. I, I, I mean, I, I say certain players. I don't. Can I? Can attack. I even call them player? I don't know. Maybe not. But that's not a topic for this video again. But overall, uh, yeah, you have to be. We, with this implant, I, I would say I, I can see more carriers die with this implant than than with the bomber tactic implant because the bomber tactic doesn't really care about. I mean, the bomber tactic does does give you a boost in speed. That's that's for sure. Uh, the the bomber tactic implant does give you a uh, a speed boost, although. It requires you to uh, unlock the implant to level 45, but it doesn't even ha doesn't have any speed reduction. Uh, doesn't have any speed reduction penalty upon using the main attribute. So the bomber attack the implant does offer you, in some ways, better protection against smaller ships since it doesn't cripple the speed of your fighters. Meanwhile, this implant does give you sustained DPS, but it absolutely cripples the fighter's velocity. So if you're caught at the wrong moment, if you forget to turn off the implant when there is an incoming tackle ship, you might be in trouble. And that's basically... I, I would say that's the, the biggest drawback, the large, the large drawback that the... Um, that this implant has. It has benefits, but it has drawbacks. And I kinda wish that the I kinda wish that other implants had the same drawbacks. Would be I mean if, if they have drawbacks that are as significant as the benefits or as close to them, then I'll I'll be okay with, with a lot of things. But there there are some implants that just have no drawback basically. Like the bomber tactic. Maybe the high cost is the, the drawback. It it costs a lot to be used but but you don't really care about the price if you can just delete a ship in, in one click. So it, it cost isn't really a problem. Now the cost from what I've Any seen uh, on this implant isn't uh, isn't that bad. It, uh, it does get attack. the job done really well, honestly. Uh, I mean, I, I say it gets the job done. It's not, at least for my case here, for my test here, it doesn't seem to be that expensive. The bomber tag remains to be more expensive, at least now, when I record this, maybe they change the down the road, maybe not, but that's what I noticed. And
And I'm trying to see if I if I covered every. I mean, the the speed now here in this in in the second uh, in the, in the second laboratory run here, uh, I, I definitely seem to be struggling in some in some ways in in some moments here to hit some shifts. And I don't think I'll, I'll uh, show you that now. The offense fighters sure have higher pay per DPS and I would say in some cases they might actually be doing more damage than the integrated ones but the integrated ones are faster and their overall damage isn't that much different it's just a bit, a bit lower than the offense ones but they're also faster and I believe they also have a bit more hit points although we haven't really paid much attention to the overall hit points but the, the overall performance of the integrated fighters seem to be a little bit better than the performance of uh, of the offense ones. Now, the fighters are separate in different uh, special categories. You have the assault ones, which uh, are faster, deal a bit more damage than the navy than, than the faction ones, but they have a uh, bit more speed, but overall less hit points. We have the offense ones, which trade speed and maneuverability for extra speed. And then you have the new integrated ones, which are basically kind of a combination between assault and offense, but uh, they don't have as much speed, don't have as much DPS. They, they're somewhat, they have both balanced, and they also have some decent hit points. So that's basically the the different categories of of drones, fighters, and lightweight ships that that we have uh, in the game. Now, the integrated the integrated drones fighters uh, are are the new addition with couple of edge, and I believe they'll add more uh, more of that down the road. Now, here you can see my internet being absolutely horse doo doo since my modules and as you can see, nothing is working, or maybe just my my phone just slowly. Uh, getting yeeted. Maybe both. I'll just reset my Wi-Fi and I'll reset the yeah, I'll reset the Wi-Fi and then we will see uh, what happens next. But yeah. I'm very glad that this is the test server because this phone would be flying at the wall right now if this was the live. If if this would ha to happen to me in a CN care that's this expensive in no on live server the phone would already be at the wall. I'm not even joking. Stuff like this is the the reason to to literally break a phone over because if it's not working, it's better be better be destroyed because next time it will have a very big, uh, very big loss mail. And ironically, uh, this ship costs more than my phone. By the way, I kind of forgot how much how much is the CNK in IP like six hundred billion. I I know. A super care that's worth about two trillion isk is worth about ten thousand USD. How much would six hundred billion be? I think about like five hundred, three hundred USD, which you know is a bit more expensive than my phone. So, yeah, it's a uh, lesser loss to just snap the phone in half than to lose a CN care. Kind of scary when you think about that. Kind of scary when you think about that. Anyway back to this ship here so uh, the the main problem with the Red Hawks uh, is the fact that their overall optimal range uh, is limited to their optimal range plus minus one kilometer go too far and you are not applying any damage go too close and tracking going is going to bite you in the in the back so you really have to maintain the fighters within the optimal range of their weapons. And I have to say, that's a bit difficult to do, because you can't really see the distance to the enemy ships from your fighter's perspective. And this is one thing that the developers should add. They should add uh, your distance to the target, and they also should add the fighter's distance to the target. Because right now you have to basically guess what's the distance to the target from your fighter. 
the tactical overlay and if you're skilled, if you've been doing this for a while, makes it easier. But at the same, but at the end of the day, it's making things uh, a bit more difficult since with this implant, your fighters really do have to be extremely accurate when it comes to uh, when it comes to the distance that you choose to orbit, or to basically. You have to be very accurate with the implant activation. You have to wait until they are in the optimal range before you activate the implant. And right now, that's a bit difficult to do because you can't really Animations see the exact detected. distance from your fighter to the enemy. And that's attack. also one of the drawbacks for this implant. Uh, it's I would say not not as bad We're as I might attack. as it might sound here. Because I'm still clearing this without a problem, although uh, my game uh, is acting up here, but uh, we can ignore the game. We can we can ignore the bugs for now, but or or bugs. Well, my internet is just horse doo doo, so I'm not really surprised by by anything here. But anyway, uh, one way to avoid the problem is to basically go close to the enemy ships, basically be in the middle. And then if you're in the middle of the enemy ships, then the range really doesn't matter because they'll all be around you. And in most cases, they'll they're all be within the optimal range of your fighters. Now this is ridiculously risky. If you are having a glass carrier, this could technically be a death sentence. Uh, if you get a CN carrier spawn, if a carrier spawns and if you can't tank it, you might be in trouble. So that's uh, one problem with it. Other problem, in no s in no space, and these ships have no stabs. So let's say a imaginary scenario where I take a CN carrier with this exact build with these exact uh, fighters, and I go, let's say, run some I don't know some Inquisitor scout anomalies, you know, stuff like that, some anomalies in no space, and let's say. I get tackled, I get scrambled by a uh, NPC ship. And let's say there is a tackle interceptor uh, jumping in. I have the implant active, I have the the sensor mode active, I get scrambled by the enemy ship. By the time I disable the implant and by the time I send my fighters to the tackle ship, the interceptor is already in the second room and already warping to the third room. And basically, since I can't get off the tackle, I get tackled by the interceptor and I get jumped by 50 ships and I die. That's basically one of the scenarios that I can see happen uh, with this implant, since ships will be webbing you, will be scrambling you if you are close to them. Especially in laboratory sites, laboratory missions, laboratory in all space, laboratory in all sec, laboratory in high sec, special sites, special anomalies in in low, in null, all have these nasty ships that can scramble you. And all it takes is just one moment of bad luck, one moment, one little moment of bad luck for a hostile tackle to get in, and it's over. So. While this implant does have a lot of very nice benefits, it also has its drawbacks, and it is definitely not a uh, not a implant that. I mean, it is a good one. Definitely, sustained DPS is always helpful, but not really a uh, AFK implant. That's what I'm trying to say. It doesn't really feel like a AFK implant. I mean, you can technically use it uh, without being active. That's one thing I forgot to mention. You can use it uh, without having the implant active. It has a very nice passive boost as well, so if you want to use it passively, you can, but you get extra DPS out of it if it's active, and it's definitely an implant that is encouraging active play over AFK play, because you can't really just click on the button and forget about everything. Uh, the, the fighters w will be slow. So. That's one thing I kind of like because AFK play with a carrier, yeah, uh, that's how most carriers get killed nowadays. And this ship does kind of, uh, this ship, this implant uh, does kind of maybe solve, maybe make the problem worse. I mean, I know for a fact that players will still be using it AFK and at this moment, I mean at, th at that moment 
you can't really blame you can't really blame the implant if the care dies uh, since you shouldn't be AFK in a carrier in Olsek in the first place. So this implant doesn't encourage active play, has sustained DPS, has drawbacks, and overall its performance is I would say okay. Now its PvP application is something that's I've been told by some of you guys that it's very good for PvP. I agree, it's very good for PvP based on uh, what I'm seeing here. I mean, sustained DPS, yeah, I'll take it. Uh, although, in some cases, if you want to kill someone very quickly, you have to drop a lot of alpha on top of it in a very short time frame. And for, for that, the bombard attack is just unmatched. In longer engagements, this one is definitely much better. So, both have purpose, both have use, both have application, both have, uh, well, when we, when we are comparing ups and downs, <laughs> I would say the Bombard Tact, it doesn't really have a lot of downs, honestly. Uh, there is not a lot of, let's say, there is not a lot of, well, downsides on the Bombard Tact. You click, you kill the targets. With this implant, not really that simple. So, that's just, I mean, I really hope that they still change the Bombard Tactic, they, they should nerf that one. If there is something that is broken, it's the Bombard, bombard Tactic, I mean, not only that one, I mean, I always say, if I nerf one, nerf Any all. And since you, you can't really push the equation on one side and basically leave the, the other one unchanged. Attack. If you change one thing, you have to change most of the things that are correlated with it, and a, a, a lot of a lot of well uh, let's say a lot of folks who who are demanding things uh they don't really understand that they they want one thing nerfed but everything else they want to be re the same because you know th th you have some folks who who don't really like a certain ship class and they want to do anything in their power just to have that one ship class useless that's just the, the long story short of one of the conversations that I've seen recently. Which, from my point of view, is 100% biased and something that should not be done by, by bias, but should be done with care and should be carefully decided with tons of testing and, of course, tons of proper feedback, not a echo chamber. So... Uh, that's how I just view things. I said this before, but I put my personal bias towards something out of the way when I'm making a video like this, because I want to be as neutral as possible to give things as they are. I don't want to sugarcoat anything, I don't want to, you know, do anything like that. I am giving the raw experience, the raw performance f from what you see on the screen here. And unfortunately, not a lot of so-called content creators for this game do that. But that's not my that's not my problem. I'm m my job. I think I'm doing my job really well here. Do I have like wishes? Like, do I have? Do I wish to have something? Yeah, I mean that everyone has. But just because I wish something to happen doesn't exactly mean that that should happen because you know uh, that's personal bias and I, I'm really uh, I'm not really okay with having personal bias into anything because then it's not going to end well and we already see I already seen that in some of the previous games when when I put I mean I have a long history with gaming I've been gaming my whole life so I have experience with with things like this because I used to be one of those who complained a lot. I used to be like that. Not anymore. I learned. I grew up, basically. When I, when, when I say I grew up, well... Uh, I... Well, it technically is growing up, honestly. When I think about it. I've, I did think about it a long, a long time. But I did change a lot. But this... I'm to a totally different person. You should have seen me, like, 10 years ago, breaking keyboards. That was hilarious. Wish I recorded that. 
Anyway, uh, maybe I actually do break something very soon, who knows? I'm playing War Thunder, but that game is pissing me off a lot. War Thunder Mobile, that game is such so such a good game. But man, is that game pissing me off. You should just check out one of the live stream highlights they had. It was hilarious, I, I raged so much. Anyway, I was actually fun to watch, I, I had fun to, to, to make that video. So, uh, my... Well, that's since the, the fight will end in about, you know, three minutes. I just put a, a little conclusion to the implants and to uh, and to the overall new fighters here. The implant is definitely nice. Uh, it does perform really well. I personally did enjoy using it so far. Now, as for the as for the drawback, yeah, and when I see person, I mean that's just my uh, that's how I experienced it. Uh, but my experience and the accurate performance. You know, it can be different, although in this case, it's on the screen, so uh, you can see the implants doing really well. Uh, I really like how the... I mean, the passive damage boost is definitely noticeable. You can definitely see that the passive boost uh, working a much better job than having the high alpha burst with the bomber tactic. Although, the drawbacks, which, you know, cannot be ignored, the... the the speed drawbacks are are scary. You really have to be careful with the speed. If there is anything that you should be careful on is the fighter speed. Don't get caught with the implant active if there is something fast approaching. Always uh, be super careful with local. Be super caref careful with uh, who is in local. Uh, blue tackle exists. Blue tackle is always out there. So don't trust anyone outside your corporation or closest friends. If you're flying a expensive carrier, basically that can be applied to any carrier since these ships are no, they're not cheap. So the main drawback is uh, its speed, but the overall general performance is okay. It's really good. Uh, has much better PVE application than the bomber tactic. Is much cheaper to use than the bomber tactic, and overall, it is a very interesting uh, addition to. Well, to the implants, I guess. I did guess, well, I guess, predict that uh, they will add something like this, although I expected it to be exclusively for lightweight ships, but I was wrong. Uh, they added it to be for, for all drone-based ships, which I guess I'm fine with, because mo more players can can use it. So I would conclude the the aerospace with the CNC carrier, and that will conclude the 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 new fighters. The new fighters, I, I like them, they're nice, they perform well, but you have to be very very careful with the orbit, Have to you have to match the orbit to be within the optimal, or else the fighters are just not going to do much damage, because that's just how the composers work, but overall their performance is okay, it's good. I don't, I don't know if if their price justifies the performance, that's uh, one thing that's up to debate. Are they worth the price tag of a couple billions, or are the no ordinary normal faction fighters simply a cheaper and cost-effective choice? I'll, uh, I'll leave that open to discussion, feel free to tell me what you think about that in the comments down below. From my personal experience here, from my perspective here at least, uh, I don't know. I, I would still keep the the normal the normal faction fighters since they're much cheaper and uh, and I would say easier to use. But again, feel free to tell me what you think about it in the comments down below. And with that being said, I will meet for the, for this video today. Uh, it was a long one. My apologies for that, but there's just there's a lot of things that I'm gonna cover and. I can't really cover everything in, in 5 minutes, so I covered it in 50 <laughs> That's just typical me, I, I guess, I know. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you would like to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, stay safe, play safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.